From within Microsoft Excel, I can access all my SAS programs and data from this menu here, which is a toolbar menu or a pull down menu. So I can either choose to pull down these choices to browse my, browse my SAS macro programs or SAS data sets or go over here to the toolbar. So in the in the example where I wanted to look at the data, when I click on this, it shows me all the variables that exist in that SAS data set and I can choose uh, how large of a block size I can jump to specific observation or bring the entire data set down. In that case, when I click on OK, it would actually connect to the SAS server and bring down the rows of data values um, for uh, and bring it directly into a spreadsheet. So this is a regular Excel spreadsheet with all the data values. If I were to bring down another set, I can go to the 200th row, for example, and bring down that block of data. So as you can see, in this case, the data is separated into to workbook tabs where the second block that I brought down here is this 200th row, and the original block was 100 um, to 200 observation. Now, in addition to viewing the data, I can also run SAS macros that uh, I have on the server. So for example, this is a very simple SAS program called um, a shoe sample where it prints out the view of the shoes data set. In this case, when I click on OK, it actually will try to run the program and prompt for a subset selection. So for example, if I want to only view all of the shoes in the Asia region, I click OK. It actually runs that SAS program on the server. I may not have SAS on this local machine, just Excel, but it would actually run it. And by default, it um, you can view either the, uh, the list, which is the output. Um, you can also view the program. So this is the actual original program here. Actually, this is the macro where does the actual, um, let me show you the original program, which is even simpler, where it only brings in uh, the d that data set through a data step and it does a proc print with a little where clause here on the region. So as you can see, the um, program is actually executed with the where clause and then the output, in this case, Asia, is uh, the subset. So I can run it again. Let's say I choose Canada and uh, re-execute that program and then uh, update that output view. You can see here in this spreadsheet is the output that I'm looking at. It's only the Canadian region. You can control how you want the macro to be viewable to the Excel uh, user. For example, if I were to go back to the server, um, you would configure this on the server side and I can go into the parameter setting and I can select on that program macro called shoe sample and then I can decide instead of a radio button as you can see here I'm going to go and change that choice to how about a checkbox as an example so if I were to do that Notice that now the value is a checkbox, and um, I'm going to apply that change on the server. And in this example, if I were to run that again, so I'll reconnect, and then I will check the program shoe sample and run it again. This time, as you can see, the same macro program shows the parameter as a checkbox. You can choose different types. So I can do the same thing by uh, running it with Africa as an example. Um, and then it will actually show me the uh, output resulting program. If I were to view that, um, you can see all the reports, which is here, are subsetted by Africa. So this is a very simple example um, that will take your SAS macro and execute it with
parameters converted into a selection for the user on the on the Excel side, you can make much more sophisticated SAS analytical macros that uses uh, sophisticated procedures. But this is just a simple example that um, you can deliver that to a Excel user without um, having SAS knowledge or SAS even installed on their um, PC.